Welcome everyone to the sixth episode of Card Canucks. I'm your host, Charles Hind, and with me soon will be Joe Anajar. He runs the popular hockey card YouTube channel named, well, PuckDaddy93, and that's where you can find him on social media. I'll get into that in a second. Before we get into that, I want to really thank everyone for 70 subscribers. I, re I really appreciate everyone uh, listening there, and you know, that's a milestone for the channel. So yeah, guys, just thank you for uh, for supporting the videos, and I, I really do appreciate you guys watching. Speaking of which, at 100 subscribers, we'll be giving away this KSA 85 uh, Austin Matthews Colors and Contours, numbered at 250, so be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on, miss out on videos. I want to thank last week's guest, Amit Acharya, from the pod, who co-hosts the podcast Cardboard Culture. He was a really good guy to have on. Uh, we went uh, we went a bit off topic there. I went for a pretty long time too, but he was just a really great guy to have on. So uh, shout outs to him for sure. And uh, yeah, so also before we get into, it, I want to announce a new channel that I'm gonna well not a new channel, a new series I'm gonna be doing with Joe, where every Thursday at same time 8:30 p.m. PDT. We're going to be discussing the, um, the NHL playoffs and h how it affects cards every Thursday. So we're going to be having a second series on the channel. I'm going to be talking about that shortly. But yeah, I mean, uh, I keep talking about Joe, so, uh, so let's bring him out here. How you doing, man? Crazy. How's it going, boys and girls? <laughs> well, thanks for having me back on. No problem, and... Uh, and uh, for sure, like everyone, everyone as far as I could tell, really loved you having on. So it's uh, we actually talked about a part two during the last episode. So I'm like, I'm hey, man, just uh, why not bring it back it, on? Right? You know, you gotta, you gotta do, it. do you gotta it. it, especially with playoffs coming up soon. I know that you're very passionate about that. And like, yeah, Maple Leafs right there, eh? My Flyers are are, are and like we're actually eliminated. The Flyers got eliminated from playoff contention, which That's sucks. That sounds it's unfortunate. I mean, they have a pretty solid team over there. They have some great prospects. They have some great uh, guys that have been around the league for a long time, like Giroux. Uh, you know, and it's 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 unfortunate because I love seeing the Flyers do well in the playoffs. Yeah, for sure. And you know, it's like on paper we look amazing, but and actually, if if you remember during during the first part like of the season, the Flyers were like nine and two. We were like crushing it but then you know then uh we got we, we, we had some injuries on defense gustafson started to play bad we got some ahl call-ups and defense just kind of collapsed and the uh, heart as we all know just really really just kind of gave up which is it, it take it takes a lot in this league to really build a contender and you really yeah. have to have all the pieces in place right like you have to have that solid goaltender you got to have that mm. D-line set in stone. I mean, that's probably the biggest thing. If your D-line is not set in stone, you're going to have a hard time making it through round ones, two, and three, right? And that's just the way it goes. Um, you know, to that point, I mean, I think the Flyers have a huge future. And, you know, with, yeah. you know I think this year for Carter Hart was a little bit of a, an eye-opener, if you will, for him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're in the NHL now. you got a, a bunch of games under your belt. Yeah. Take this season, reflect on it, move forward. That's all he has to do because he's an unbelievable goalie. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm honestly not surprised that this happened because the thing with Hart, he plays amazing, but then his confidence kind of gets shot when he loses. And so I'm not really surprised that this happened, but he's still so young and he put so much pressure on him. I'm not worried about it. He's having a sophomore slump, but I'm just saying, like, I was watching some of those games. Brutal. But uh, so actually, to your point, we're going to be going into like what like you know like what teams have these key pieces and what might happen to their cards because i know that this is this is the first year where where uh, you've gotten back in the hobby where this is the first time that you're experiencing playoffs well i wow. think anyways with you know like with cards and so like around playoff time stuff really starts to really starts to go crazy because everyone's anticipating you know the next the next big playoff star well, that's kind of how I changed my focus, right? As I said in the last podcast we did, is that I changed my focus all to modern young guns, future watch autos of guys that are going into the playoffs, guys I think are going to have deep runs and guys that I think are going to have a huge impact, right? So, um, you know, like the Rantanins, the Makars, um, even, you know, the Barzals, the Mitchies, yeah. the, you know, things of that nature. And, and, you know, for guys in the hobby, that are looking to, you know, either 
build their collections by selling cards that they pick up now for the playoffs, that's a great way to, you know, pick up these guys like the Brinkat. Look at him. Yeah. Man. He was unbelievable. He's in top six, I believe, in scoring right now, if you look. Yeah. Whoever thought that? The Brinkat. You know, you could still catch his young gun, I, I believe, for under 40 bucks, guaranteed. Um, but this kid is going to be a gem. And, and it's unfortunate the Blackhawks aren't going to make yeah. the playoffs either, right? It's, it's sad, but, I mean, you know, they've had a tough year as well. Yeah, but uh, the, uh, they've also had some bright spots. Kane's been playing out of his mind. Like, I thought that Patrick Kane... Yeah, like, I'm just going to be honest. I thought Patrick Kane was kind of, you know, like, he's getting old. You know, he's not he's not the same, like, you know, like, big, like, flashy star that he was maybe five, six years ago. But yeah. he's been playing like it. Like, he, he blew me out of the water. He, he pretty much, when the whole Taves thing, when, you know, he got injured or whatever was happening with Taves, you know, he kind of took the team on his back and... And, re and really ran with it. And you know what? Kane from five years ago is still Kane now. Just oh, yeah. developed way more. Oh. Way more. Two-way game is developed. He is more of... Like, he's an unbelievable playmaker too, right? Oh, like, yeah. Kane, like, he's done so much for guys like Debrinkat, Kubalik, mm. um, you Panarin. know... And, Panarin, you know, back when Panarin year. was with the Blackhawks, mm. you know, look at Panarin now getting ragdolled by Tom Wilson. But I mean, it's yeah. <laughs> that's a yeah. that's a conversation. For oh, later, that's a I conversation mean, for sure. Oh, but for yeah, sure. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry. Just, just just before we continue with this, I want to address some of the comments that we had come in here. Oh, amazing! I love it. So, oh, uh, we had a past guest here, Indigenous Rookie Cards. Name, hey fellas, hey man, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, bud? Uh, we got a uh, Bobby Burrell. He was a past guest. He's yeah, uh, dude. I'm always happy when Bobby's in the house here. Howdy, Charles and Joe, with your R Ray Dunn mug. <laughs> That's for you, Bobby. <laughs> it's a pretty nice mug. We got regular listener Sanderson Two Or. Hey guys, what's up, man? What's up, Sanderson? Yeah, Sanderson's a really good guy. He says hey, name. Oh, he's Bobby. solid, man. He's a loyal, uh, a loyal uh, Card Canuck podcast guy. He, listener, he's always yeah. on. He he, yeah. he does it big. Oh, yeah, he's always in the comments. He's always watching. I appreciate it. We got Telen in 65. Hey, guys, what's up, man? Oh, what's up, just, guys? Yeah, we got a new comment here from Ajimaz, another regular listener. Another oh. legend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another legend there in the comments. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, what's up, Ajimaz? But, yeah, so honestly, dude, like uh, like this year, just 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 before we get in, in, into specific players, this year's going to be so interesting for the playoffs could be because I wonder like if if someone you know like like the Leafs who are obviously on like a huge stretch of not winning the cup if they win the cup are people going to like discredit them and be like oh well this was just this was just like the covid year you know like it was like a fluke you know cuz that's what you I'm kind of thinking is going to happen you know that that conversation will come up it's the haters that you know like I post things about the Leafs even on Instagram or TikTok and you see them all. Oh, they're in the, the crap division. They're in this and that. And, you know, they don't have defense or goaltending in the North division. I'm like, buddy, do you understand that the best players in the NHL are in the North? Hmm. McDavid, Dreisaitl, Marner, Austin Matthews. Uh, Pedersen, Besser, I can go on for days. If you guys, you can't argue with me. Every division has their not good teams mm. and great teams. Every exactly. division. And if you want to make that argument about the Leafs, they were as good last year. They just have learned and put pieces together. And now that's why I think they're better prepared for this playoff run. Simple as that, guys. For sure, man. I got to agree with you there. And I think that a lot of the people who say that, like, see, I I partially agree with them in, just in the sense of I don't know what would happen. Like, I'm not saying that, oh, if, you know, you know, like if abs play Leafs, you know, abs are crushing them. I don't know. So it's like, I don't know what happened. And I think it's just a bunch of people like, you know, you know, you know, like sitting there thinking that like they're like a coach or something. And they're like, oh, yeah, this will happen and this will happen. It's like, it's you don't know what's going to happen armchair GMs that think they know everything about the game and their their opinion is correct and that's fine everyone yeah. is entitled to their own opinion and that's what makes the sport amazing right everyone can choose yeah. oh I like this team I, I I'm rooting for this team and so on but at the end of the day 
I've always been a Leaf fan mm. since the day I opened my eyes to hockey. So there's the diehard fans, and then there's bandwagoners that you're going to see mm. once the Leafs do make that run. Mm. And I say do, not if. They will. Mm. And that's a prediction. Yeah. You know, Pop Daddy loves predictions, and I'm sticking by it. Leafs in six, final with the abs. <laughs> that been, yeah, imagine if that actually happens. Because, like, in the it's going to happen. That's why I'm making the playoff series, is because we're going to refrain back to this. And, you know, oh, that's... 100%. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so that's 100%. something that we're definitely going to be talking about. And, you know, that's a series that, like, I'm really looking forward to. That's because no one else is doing it. And it's, like, it's, it's all about the playoffs. It's all about, like, prices going up. Because during the playoffs, man, like... I don't think you understand like how crazy it gets, especially with all with the, all the guys from basketball coming over. Because with hockey, it's always not been about one game performances. It's always been about you know like steadiness, you know, and you yeah. know that's still a thing. But now that all the basketball guys are here, let's say you know when Farabee had his like his uh, his four point night, hey. this stuff like four x overnight, and it's like four. so. If one of those guys like has like a crazy game, you know, not like an unknown rookie, but you know, like you know, kind of like a, yeah, yeah, like a Ryan Paling or like you know, like one of those guys. If they have like a crazy game, they're gonna go nuts. Well, I mean, you can even talk about Sandine. What have you seen yeah. from him? Like you saw the two PSA tens I bought about a couple months ago. I bought them because I knew that this would mm-hmm. happen. I knew mm-hmm. that he would get in the lineup before playoff time. I knew he would make an impact right away. Which he and has. right now, his his card has gone up because oh, yeah. because of the way he's playing and the way he fits in so well. Mm-hmm. Um, he he doesn't look like a rookie. Oh no, Dandine, who can argue with that? He he looks like a beauty out there. Exactly, and you know, I don't watch too many, uh, too many Leafs games, but like, you know, like, and you know, everyone says this. I've seen highlights, and Sandin looks like a very good player. He, he, he really does. And like the thing about him, he's not always going to be the highest scorer. He's not always going to be the best defender, but he's smart, and that's what he is. He's very, very, yes. he's very, very smart. And I think what's happening now is because you know, it's so funny that we're having this conversation because like literally, Joe, three years ago, back, um three years ago like in the hobby no one would have cared because he's because he's a defenseman no one would have right. cared. but now when there's guys like Kale mccarr quinn hughes adam fox uh oh what's his wow. name on dallas like uh heiskanen yeah or... we're heiskanen like this is a conversation though i think more eyes are on defensemen than ever and when you have someone like sandine come in and not put up a ton of points but just be really smart in a big market it's all yeah. it takes and to be to be his age, to step into the Maple Leafs roster mm. as stacked as it is, and to be as calm and poised as he is with the puck, that says something to me um, about his character, about mm. his willingness to be in that lineup. And I'm telling you, man, he is going to have such an impact this playoff run. He's not going anywhere. Oh, He's no, he... a Leaf. He's mm. it's a lot. He's there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see how how uh, the Leafs could ever give him up. He he's a very no. good prospect, and he's so young. Like he was a rookie like last year in like twenty nineteen. Yeah. It's like I, I think he's nineteen or twenty. Yeah, he's like nineteen or twenty. It's 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 just crazy like how fast because people always associate development with 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 the points. I feel like you know like everyone's like oh well look at look at the numbers. It's all going yeah. up. But with Sandine or like most smart defensemen. You need to watch them to really understand, you know, you know, like what's going on. And 100%. Like, and you know, and I, the thing the thing with me is uh, I played defense, so I, I really take understand. A, an understanding of of the development of a, a rookie player in in that league. Like when I see Adam Fox do what he's doing right now in his sophomore sophomore year is is just crazy. It's it's crazy. To even be in the conversation with Hedman and Makar. Like, Makar got injured, right? He, yeah. To be honest with me, or to be honest with you, Makar <laughs> would be my would be my pick for the Norris Trophy if he had played the full amount yeah. of time. In my opinion. Um, not taking away anything from Adam Fox, because Adam Fox has had a tremendous year, and, and you got Hed- Victor Hedman there 
who is just a staple in that Tampa Bay lineup, yeah. right? It's, it's incredible what he has done. And I just, I don't feel the Tampa Bay Lightning are the team this year. I just, I don't see it. And, you know, yeah, they're great. They're great. Bass is an unbelievable goaltender. But you've seen what they've done in the past, you know, where they got kicked out in that first round. And everyone yeah. was surprised. So you can't discount that. You can't, uh, you know, there's other teams in the league that are very, very hungry. Um, mm, like the I Avalanche, you know, Florida. like the Avalanche right now. Uh, Florida is another team that might make some upsets. Hurricanes. Um, uh, hurricanes as well. I mean, I love that team and what they stand for. Um, they bring back the fun about the game. Um, mm. they, they are just having a blast. Imagine playing on that team. That'd be, the, that'd be great. The, the coach is Rod Brindamore. He is an unbelievable yeah. coach, top five in the league, guaranteed. And he's going to get paid. He oh, is going to yeah. get paid. <laughs> whether, whether or not it's with Carolina, which I think they'd be stupid not to, to hire him back yeah. and his entire coaching staff. But, um, yeah, the Hurricane are going to be dangerous. Uh, Sebastian Ajo. Uh, who else you got there? Um, uh, oh, oh uh, Svechnikov. Uh, Svechnikov is Dougie another. Hamilton. Hamilton is always another defenseman I, I like to watch play. Mm. Um, but another yes. team that I think is going to be <laughs> – and you can't discredit this guy because he is the one of the best players in the world, and that's Pittsburgh, mm. Sidney Crosby. Yeah. I mean – if you're discounting the Pittsburgh Penguins with that lineup still, it's 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 tough, right? Like you got look at the East Division. You mm-hmm. have Pittsburgh, Washington, Boston, New York Islanders. That's Imagine those division. series, guys. Those series are going to be probably. I'll be I'll be honest. They'll probably be the best series in the first rounds. Oh yeah. You got you got Pittsburgh, New York Islanders, and Washington and Boston. Jeez. That's if, like, if the play if the playoffs started today, yeah. Which I mean, I mean, like going into it, I mean that's probably what it's going to be. But at the same time, yeah, you're right. There's there 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 are so many hunger team um, hungry teams that feel the need to win. Like you know, Vegas. Vegas is one where I'm looking at them and I'm like, that that looks scary to me. Like just just not not just because of numbers, but like uh, like I, you know, like I watch highlights, which sounds stupid, but. Like, some of the plays that they make are scary. And um, my only concern with them is uh, goaltending. I know that they're uh, inconsistent goaltending, but yeah. they, but overall it's solid. But, you know, like, when they're good, they're good. When they're bad, they're bad. So I just really want to see how that all plays out. But see, the, hmm? Go ahead. Uh, the series I'm going to be watching, like, the most is whoever the Leafs play and whoever the Avs play. Those are the two I'm really going to keep my eyes on. Well, it's it's looking like it's going to be, um, you know, Toronto, Montreal, Edmonton, mm-hmm. Winnipeg from, from yeah, what it looks cool. like now. I mean, uh, Toronto, Edmonton, Winnipeg have clinched already. So it's whoever's fighting for that fourth spot, which I'm taking it's going to be Montreal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how epic is that first round? Leafs, Montreal out of seven. First time that's happened in God knows how long. That's how you start off a playoff. That's oh yeah. That's yeah, how it's... you start off a playoff round. And I don't know if Price is going to be back in. I don't yeah. know if uh, they. You know they're missing a lot of players. Gallagher. Yeah. Uh, they're 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 kind of thin right now when it comes to their depth. So I don't know, man. It's going to be fun. For sure, it's actually funny because I tell that I left a comment exactly like that. And is it still is it still uh, a rivalry? I think it is for sure. It's uh, it's definitely still, yeah, it's, it's definitely still kind of a definitely a, a rivalry there. But do I know what would be really cool? Just imagine Gelchenyuk like scores an OT game seven. That would be. I said it. I said this in one of my other videos on my channel. Um, I said that guys like Galchenyuk. Guys like Simmons, guys like Hyman are going to be the heroes mm-hmm. of this Stanley Cup playoff run. Um, Joe, I expect Joe Thorne to continue what he has been doing. Um, he has been unbelievable on and off the ice for this squad. And, you know, you look at his 18 games without no points. 
Do you understand the impact he has on this team, though? Exactly. It's, it, it's beyond points, mm. okay? Like, he is there with Spezza. Look, look at that line with Brooks, Spezza, and Thornton. Yeah, that's that, that that's a great line right there. Wow, that's like the two dads and the baby. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right. It's it's crazy how well he is playing in between those two guys. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about all the teams, but uh, obviously I'm a little biased. But um, mm-hmm. you know that fourth line or third, you know that fourth line for the Leafs is gonna is gonna Amazing. cause some damage. It mm-hmm. will. I'm telling you. I mean, they got future Hall of Famers on that fourth line, like. It's crazy. They got well, one guy that just passed Maurice the Rocket Richard in points for yeah. top 100, Jason Spezza. And then you got uh, Joey Thornton, uh, just 1,100 assists. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Guys don't have 1,100 points in the NHL, and Joey Thornton's sitting there with 1,100 assists. assists. So put mm. put that into perspective, guys. Yeah, They're for like, sure. Yeah, and I mean, dude, that's... This is what I love talking about because, you know, everyone can say, oh, you know, like, how's Marner going to do? How, Ma- how, you know, like, how's Matthews going to do? But what I like about this is we're talking about, like, fourth liners. But it's fun because at the end of the day, those are the guys that really make an impact. I mean, look they at Justin Williams. 100%. Exactly. Oh, Justin Williams. Williams, Mr. yeah. Mr. Game 7. He will always be remembered as a playoff killer because oh, he yeah. did it all the time. And he is the epitome of heart. Like, if you talk about a captain, Justin Williams did it, oh, man. Yeah. He, he, he was boss. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, I it, it's so funny because, like, I always joke, Justin Williams was, like, an average third, second liner during the regular season. The second playoffs came, oh. Funny. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, he did pretty well. And, like, a lot of teams took him just because of that, you know. I know that he was on the Flyers for a bit because of that, but it's just crazy, well, man. But uh, we got some more comments here. Uh, Facebook user, if you want me to see your name, just uh, either either leave a comment or click on the link that's on the Facebook post. What, but what's he referring to? Last time? Oh, was... that, uh, that's the last time that the uh, Leafs and Habs played in a playoff series. I think. Good on that snipe. Nice. Thanks for the info. I love that. Yeah, for sure. So this is this has been boiling for a while. Then, yeah, Facebook user says I have concerns about Leaf goaltending. I mean, okay, so I really want you to address this because I don't know a ton about this. Okay, I will address this. Okay, so first off, the Leafs don't just have two goaltenders. They have three. Okay? They have three. They have Anderson, who has been getting into game shape form. you got to understand, Anderson has had the Leafs on his back for five years. Mm. For people to to poo on him... Yeah. Yeah, on him. Because of the year he's had during his injury, yeah. he's off on him. You know, mm-hmm. he has done unbelievable things. The Leafs just didn't have, didn't have the right pieces at the time. Mm-hmm. They do they do now, okay? So Anderson is going to come in. He'll play a couple games with the Marlies. He did already. Mm-hmm. And then you got Jack Campbell. Mm-hmm. If he has not proven his worth to you by now, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. People are going to say, oh, it's in the North Division. Oh, he he's a backup still. Oh, he hasn't proven it over an 82-game season. We're talking now, though. We're not talking yeah. what he's done in the past. Or This guy has won a Stanley Cup. So you look at Jack Campbell's eyes when he does the interviews. He is hungry. Mm-hmm. He is not. He has changed his tone. He's not that sorry. I'm so sorry for letting in goals. That's not the Jack Campbell we see today. The Jack Campbell we see today is a confident man who's going to stand up and he's going to show the entire NHL why he has earned the spot to take that Mm. first game in that playoff run. He's earned it in my heart. Jack Campbell is the number one starter in the playoffs. That's it. It's his job to lose, though. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying there? It's yeah. his job to lose. If if he plays unbelievable in those first couple games against whoever, then run with it. You can run with a hot goalie, regardless what team you are. You run with a hot goalie. But if he doesn't, then you show Riddick sometime. You show Anderson sometime. 
And Anderson has taken enough garbage as a person through mm -hmm. social media, through, you know, he's taken a lot, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like people just turned on him. So he, he has something to prove as well. So I think he might do some damage. You can't, you can't discredit uh, Frederick Anderson. He, he's, he's, a, he's an unbelievable goalie. Joe, and what is it? I am so glad you say that because I see Toronto media bashing him all the time, and I'm, and you know, like, and you're like, you're like, you're like, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, okay, he gives, uh, you know, a few easy goals, but look at him overall. He's yeah. an elite goalie, and I think people are saying like, he's not a starter. He's an ECHL goalie. You don't know. You clearly don't understand how the NHL works, then, because yeah. he's it's, it's... he's really good. He's like. He... Yeah, the, the amount of stuff I hear on social media, these guys with no profile pics, yeah, no, 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 no uh, bio, no nothing, no posts. Those are the guys that are trolling, and those are the guys that are, are putting it out there that you know all the negative stuff, right? So mm -hmm. that's gonna happen, and and just like I do, just like I tell you, forget about haters, and that's yeah. what Anderson needs to do. He knows who he is, and if you saw him in his last video uh, interview, he says, I know I'm a great goaltender. Mm -hmm. He looked them all dead in the eye. I know I'm a great goaltender, and, and he is. And you know yes. what? To have Riddick, Anderson, and Campbell, I That's like our chances good. with our up front and our D. Look at TJ Brody. He's having an outstanding silent year. Yes. Silent. Silent. That's Quiet. Quiet. And that's what a defense should be. Quiet. Mm -hmm. You never hear his name because he does everything right. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, I think as, I th <laughs> as yeah. you were. Yeah, I definitely think that 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 oh, you're right about it. It's it's just so like sad to see because yeah, and and uh, as as this comment says, Toronto media is harsh, and it's always been harsh. It's 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 always been really hypercritical of their players, and maybe it shouldn't be. But the thing is, is yeah, I mean. The goaltending depth on Toronto is really good, but yeah. I I just um, well one guy too, and you know, and this is kind of controversial to bring up, and and what is it? I'm gonna be bringing up comments right after this, but <laughs> and you know, this is the this is gonna be a statement that Leafs fans are gonna hate me for. I don't think Hutchinson's a bad goalie. I don't either. I'm just gonna look say that. Did, look what he did with uh, what was it, Colorado last yeah. year in the playoffs. It, he held his own. And and you know what? Hutch is another option, really. Yeah, he is. It, it, so you got four N NHL level goalies. NHL goaltenders. Um, Hutchison being on the lower end of that. But you know what? He can get the job done, too, as well. If you look at Jack Campbell's numbers over the span of time, I don't. what is his record? Jack I Campbell's am... 16, 12, and 1, I think. I think so. Or no, no, not twelve. What am I talking about? Sixteen, no, no. three, one. Yeah, uh, I I can look really quickly if you want me to. Yeah, find out Jack Campbell's record because Jack Camp that's an NHL record. If you if you really analyze what he has done, his numbers, his save percentage. Jack yeah, he... Campbell broke records. Oh yeah, guys, do you ever hear about a goaltender getting hot for playoff runs? Andrew this is Hammond. the time. This is the time. <laughs> Jack Campbell's yeah. hot. He's riding exactly. it. So, Dude. Bennington, mm. there you go. From last mm. place to Stanley Cup winner. Prove there it. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good example. Um, I guess Bennington was so unknown before that, but yeah. So I'm looking. No at one knew Bennington. No <laughs> one knew Bennington. He came in and stole the show. And it's kind of mm. replicating what Jack Campbell has done in the later part of this year. Oh, for I sure. like Jack Campbell. Uh, he, I like where his heart is. I like where his intentions are, and I think he's 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 going to be the the starter in game one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I definitely agree with you. And one guy, and you might not, and you might not know who this is, but one guy when I think of when when we talk about Jack Campbell, I think of Jack Campbell as a more consistent Andrew Hammond, like. Like in reality, because Andrew Hammond, he came in like really yeah. from nowhere, and he With went Ottawa, like yeah, yeah, and he went like twenty and three, and so it's like okay, so, but like Campbell's obviously more consistent than 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 Hammond is, but well, he, 
he made his name right the hamburger for a reason yeah exactly because right? he, he was stealing the show he was stealing hamburgers whatever you want to say but yeah, yeah hammond did a did some damage he made his name but i i, I think what the leafs have in those three goaltenders don't don't discredit riddich either he uh, okay i just really want to speak to this really quickly i think calgary fans were way too harsh on him because and yeah. and what and what is it and what is it they say oh he he never performed under pressure he never performed under pressure when he was performing under pressure you guys swapped him out for cam talbot it's like that's a, that's an unfair argument to say that he can't perform under pressure we don't know he's he's a he's a good goalie we have no idea but um Here's some uh, here's some more comments here. Sorry, sorry guys, I'm uh, I'm uh, a bit behind. Oh, dear soon, brother. Yeah, for sure. And so we got a, a Facebook user. You got. I think Big Joe will be important. Uh, Joe Thornton. Yeah, I think he will too, for sure. I think he's gonna Big be the jo- guy. Big Joey Thornton. Um, he is definitely gonna have a huge impact on this uh, playoff run. Oh yeah. Um, you think about it, man. He's played twenty plus years in this league. Has mm-hmm. never touched that cup. Think about how yeah. badly he wants that cup. It's 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 just a, it's a no brainer. He's going to come in and, and and do what he needs to do, whether it be scoring, setting up like he's an unbelievable passer, or mm-hmm. playing that role in the fourth role where he's banging up guys. That's what mm-hmm. he's going to do, whatever it takes. Yeah, for sure. And you know, you can definitely tell that he's really determined because he got close with San Jose, but he never quite, never quite got it done. And I think that there's definitely some, uh, not like, not like hard feelings there, but he, he definitely feels a bit tense, and he really wants to make a run this year. So I think he'll be important for sure. He's going to be playing good, I think. And, and I think with guys along with him, with like the Simmons and Spezas, who never touched the cup as well, right? Like mm. those guys are coming down to their end uh, end of their career, right? So they yeah. they definitely want a piece. Exactly, and uh, didn't Galchenyuk? I think Galchenyuk was on like uh, was on the Penguins when they won the cup. I think. I'd have to look back at that. I, I don't know 100, percent but uh, that would be incredible if he did. I love Galch. Galch. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Honestly, once I saw that that happened, I said, "Okay, yeah, the Leafs are going to be Le- the Leafs are going to be a very good contender this year." And I want to get into that a, um, a bit later, but sure. I'm just looking up at uh, Galchenyuk stats because now I'm so curious. I need to know if he made. Uh, no. Oh, so Galchenyuk, uh, he made a run with Montreal, and he's been in the playoffs a couple times. But no, I, yeah. I, I thought that he. Oh, I got some. Oh, yeah, no, he didn't make the playoffs with the with. Uh, you know, I, I like what uh, Gelch has been doing in the last couple uh, couple of games. I mean, he, he has his legs still. He's earning it. You know, he's still on that uh, that line. And you know what? He scored the other game with a goal and assist. So, you know what? He, he's he's earning his key. Oh, yeah, for it. sure. I want to talk to you, though, mm. to kind of change the tune off the leaves. Okay. What's your thoughts on McDavid hitting 100 points? He hit it? No, I'm asking you. Does he? Oh. He's at 96 see, right now. See, that's tricky. It all depends on who he plays. I. He's at 90. There's like how many games left? Like he's at it, he's at 90. He had a three three point night last night. Jesus. So he's um, at 90. He's at 96 points right now. I don't know how many games left, but he's at 96 points as we speak. I think he hits it. I think he does it. Speaking of what a uh, pace. What a pace yeah. he's on. Yeah, and if he can do that, then he would have been on for like a 170-point year in the regular season, which is just... And it, it brings up a great conversation about, you know, who who is really going to win the heart? Is it Matthews with his 40th goal in 49 games? Or is it going to be Matthew or McDavid hitting 100 points in 56 games? No one... Like, I, I have no idea. Both Both those stats are incredible. Oh, yeah. To this NHL level, it's 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 crazy to see McDavid push the bar the way he has, and to see Mc, yeah. uh, Matthews literally score every game I see play. Yeah, he literally it, scores every single game I see him play, um, which is incredible at this NHL level. I mean, mm. he's nine nine goals ahead of McDavid. Jeez, That's we're crazy, talking man. about we're talking about McJesus. He's nine yeah, goals yeah, ahead. Yeah. So put that into perspective when you want to talk about the best player in the league. Yeah, 
maybe McDavid, but you know what? I think Matthews will make a push to, to, to change that in years to come. Yeah, for sure. And the thing about Matthews is that I'm he's Canadian. So... Yeah, yeah. I'm and, Canadian. Know... I'm saying that, so there you go. Yeah, and like with Matthews, he's so young. Um but like it's really crazy to think and one of my worries, and I don't want to go too long about this because we have like so many comments to address. Oh, here. let's like, let, let's let's hit the questions. Let's okay. hit the questions. Yes, yeah, so one of the questions that I just pulled up is do you think price will be a difference maker? Honest answer? Yeah. Not against the Leafs. Same here. See, the thing about Price... Not now. Not now. He hasn't played any games. He's not warm. He's not hot. He's... Usually you want your goaltender to play games before the playoff time to get him into a rhythm, to get him... You know, it's like, ask any goaltender. The more pucks hit me, the better I play. Mm -hmm. It's simple. And... Carey Price has been out of the picture. They've been running Allen and uh, who's the other? Primo. Yeah, Primo. Primo. He got lit up last night. Yeah. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He got pulled quick. So I don't think Price will have any impact on that first round matchup against the Leafs. I'm sorry. It's it's game over. Yeah, so my personal opinion on it, uh, I have a very deep hatred for Price, and it stems back to last year in the in the Flyers playoff series. He just whined and whined and whined, interference this, interference that. Price, no one touched you. I don't know what to tell you. And so I just do, like, I, hmm, Carey Price. Uh, yeah, I don't think he has any impact. Um, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I don't know what else to say besides Carey Price has been on the decline for years now, and that yeah. What I will say about Price is that he needs a new scenery. Yes, he needs <laughs> he needs to get the hell out of Montreal. Yeah, he's Simple needed that for that. years. Yeah, he's needed that for like six years now. He's paid his dues. He needs to win a cup for his legacy. Yeah, he has all the wins in Montreal. Good. Who cares? Yeah, your legacy means if you won a cup. If you win cups, your legacy will grow. If mm-hmm. you don't win cups, your legacy won't be where you think it will be or where you want it to be. And that's exactly. just a fact. It's a fact in sports. There's so many players who don't get the recognition that they deserve because of them not winning championships. Yeah. You know that. And if mm-hmm. Price doesn't win, sorry. That's, that's yeah. part of the game, right? That's why you play the game. And uh, what is it? I think that people were so scared of that with with the Alex Ovechkin there because for the longest time it, it kind of looked pretty dim for him. It's like, well, what's gonna you know what's gonna happen? But even before COVID, once he won, his prices went up, which is like well, he, yeah, he he's the best goal scorer in, in my the opinion. NHL. Yeah. Oh no, he is. In my opinion. No, oh, in my opinion too. He is the best goal scorer of all time. Oh, yeah. As of, as of right now. I'm sorry, Gretz. You scored a lot of along the ice goals, and we're playing in an era where the goaltenders were just atrocious. Goalies were Swiss cheese, yeah. You're talking about an era where Ovechkin came into the league and scored over 50 goals in his rookie year. Yeah. Ovechkin, I hope he hits that record. I hope he does too. I, that is one of the records I, I want to see break. Mm-hmm. Uh, he deserves it. He he will be forever, in my opinion, one of the best goal scorers of all time. Uh, mm-hmm. That shot. But this is where I look at Matthews now. And mm-hmm. I go, Ovi hasn't really had the Ovi year. And Matthews has really put a staple on this year as, hey, I'm here now. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm the goals. I'm the big dog now. Yeah. I have 40 goals in 49 games. It's about time you pass me the torch. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if Matthews gets tremendous votes for that Hart Trophy. He's locked oh, up the rocket. Mm-hmm. He he's had an impact, <laughs> if oh, if yeah. anything, right? Like so, it's it's the it's up to the voters. Obviously, McDavid hitting 100 points would be incredible, but Matthews 40 and 49, that's something to write home about. Oh, you know, and, you know, like, for sure it is. And, you know, I think people are going to discredit him a bit. And, you know, I'm not, 
I'm not really, you know, I'm not going to discredit him, but for me, it's always going to be a what-if scenario. I'm not saying, oh, he wouldn't have hit that if he was, you know, not in the conference. I'm just going to say, I would like to see what happened if he wasn't in that conference. I'm not saying he doesn't score 40 again, because, you know, he probably will. He would probably well, score 40, I mean, definitely. He's, he's, and that's the thing about this conversation about divisions, too, right? Like, mm. Matthew scored 47 goals. He was only one away from the Rocket last year. The yeah. Leafs were a good team last year, too. In their oh, yeah. normal respective division. So that argument about, oh, they're in the North, it has no credit. Mm-hmm. That that North division argument about the North being a, a shit team, no. Every division has their, has their good and bad. Every yeah. division. And every division has their stars. And, and it's, I just don't, I, it's just people hating, right? Like it's, yeah. I, and it's media. It's, it's a tagline. Yeah, it's it's very easy to get clicks on your article through that. So I think that's definitely what it is for sure. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree with you that Matthews, this year at least, what was like you know one of if not the best goal scorers in the whole league. But I definitely I strongly agree with your argument about um Ovechkin over Gretzky because everyone always says oh Gretzky 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 Gretzky. Yeah, let's talk about Gretzky for a second. I really want to. I'm passionate about this. Sure. Again, great player. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to come here and like discredit Gretzky because I I I couldn't do that. No one can do what he did, pretty much. But goalies were Swiss cheese. Look at the They're... equipment, and it's like half, almost half and of this is yeah. It, it's funny because you know, I don't know if you watch Bar Down. I do. Uh, BSN Bar Down. Mm-hmm. They always make mention and and joke about how Gretzky's goals were, or majority of them were along the ice. Yeah, he couldn't raise the Because goal, goaltenders didn't drop down into a butterfly stance. They were yeah. stand-up goaltenders. So, you know, it's it's uh, it's crazy that – sorry, bring me back to what I was thinking quick. Uh, you, you were thinking about how Gretzky uh, didn't raise the puck and that goalies were bad. Raise the yeah. puck, yeah. So yeah. Gretzky not raising the puck and then, you know, like it was such a different era. The, the mm-hmm. players weren't as um, – ready for the season they weren't conditioned they didn't condition themselves the way they do now they were they were like smoking in the dressing rooms back yeah in the day. you know what i mean like you don't see that now yeah you will not see that yeah they do their things outside of the ice but i mean the players now are in such great condition and mm-hmm. for having even ovi to do what he has done in that era it's it, mm-hmm. it just it marks it like Gretzky was great for his time. Yeah, that's that that that's that's just it. And and it's all about eras. It's mm-hmm. all about eras. Like if you want to talk about a great unbelievable player, you're talking Sidney Crosby, but Yeah. Sidney Crosby is look what he's done over his career, man. Mm-hmm. And people talk sh- talk about him the, yeah. in such disrespect. The Golden yeah. Goal, Hart trophies. Stanley Cups. Like, he is one of the best players ever to play this oh, yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, and, you know, coming I from a Flyers fan. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell. But, you know, um, coming from a Flyers fan, Crosby's a great player. I mean, he's fantastic. He's definitely one of the generation's, well, probably the, gener- the generation's best playmaker. Well, I mean... I'm not gonna say that. That's 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 pretty controversial. I was I was just gonna say Will Marner give him a Will Marner give him a run for his money. I don't know, but just I'm not I'm I'm not even gonna talk about that. But Crosby, Marner, eh? yeah. I mean Marner. I mean he. I think he's the reason why Matthews gets a lot of those goals. Yeah, and you're wearing his jersey right now too. Marner's yeah. my guy. Marner oh, yeah. is a magician. Oh, yeah. He is the magic man. He is the reason. You put any guy with 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 Marner, he will make them he'll, ten he'll times score. better. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. And I don't think Marner gets enough credit. Oh, he doesn't. He do, he is undershadowed. He the guy is leading Matthews in points. Just so you know, right now it's sixty six points and third yeah. in the NHL. And you wonder why I put my money where Mitch Marner is. Yeah, Mitch Marner. He's. I definitely think. No, I don't think he's gonna have as good of uh, of a legacy that 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 a Crosby's had. We don't know that, 
But well, I think definitely, I mean, like, you watch how, like, how young Marner is and how, and, like, just how skilled he is. He's a great player, but I just want to really quickly continue with this. Um, Crosby, I think the problem with him, he doesn't have much of a personality. And when he does, he's, he's, he's always bashing something. That's my one, my, that's my one problem with him. I, I agree with that. I feel like he's been bred from a young age to be professional. Mm-hmm. He knew at a young age that he had exceptional talent. And in order for him to carry on his brand, he had to act a certain way. Yeah. So the same kind of thing is with like John Tavares. John mm-hmm. Tavares is a very, very professional, very um straight to the point not like he's not a showman mm-hmm. where you got ovechkin who will jump in the fountain yeah. with the cup <laughs> and have a good time right with beer. <laughs> so there's yeah. there's different players right there's mm-hmm. there's guys like crosby like mark messier was that type of player he was mm-hmm. undershadowed by gretz very professional very leadership like he's one of the best leaders in in in, in sports oh yeah Mark Messier, we're talking. Oh yeah. So Rangers, Oilers, yeah. There's different players, and and all of them have my respect. At the end of the day, I mean, you can't discredit Crosby and what he's done, and mm-hmm. McDavid and what he's doing. I think would be McDavid now what he's doing compared to Gretzky in his era, what he did. I don't. I would love to see where that balance. Yeah. I because. Honestly, the era, the era change. There, there's a lot to, to really put oh, into uh, yeah. thought there. there. There's a huge, a lot to think about there. Yeah, exactly. And and what is it? I'm I'm going to be referring to like four minutes ago. But what I was about to say was that uh, Crosby got no, not Crosby. Gretzky got half of his assists, but with with uh, the puck bouncing off the board because that was that was allowed back then. So it's like. So, you know, and, like, I'm always going to say, yeah, Gretzky's going to probably be the most, you know, the most valuable rookie card and everyone, because, because it's rare. But at the end of the day, in my, like, like in my personal opinion, it's so much harder to score NHL goals in this era than it's ever been. And I think yeah. Ovechkin has definitely proved, I think, and this is going to be a very, very, very um, hot take. My order of um, the greatest players, just personally, it... It goes like this. Ovechkin, Howe, Lemieux. Just a very, very, very quick hot take. Ovechkin, Howe, Lemieux. And and why why I say that is because, yeah, Howe, <laughs> Howe is in an era where it, it actually, and you know, um, you know, like we all criticize, you know, well, you know, um, the goalies were, 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 were a Swiss cheese. I agree with that, but people have to put into perspective. This was an era where there was no curves on their stick. Like it's a completely yeah, that straight stick. Yeah, so they couldn't even raise the puck if they wanted to. So it's like, it's you got to you got to look at it. Every era had their advantages. Exactly. And if you if you were a good player, you would stand out, and that's just the way. It's it's the evolution of players in mm-hmm. in hockey. And sure. we've seen that change from the 80s to the 90s to the 2000s, even to now. Mm-hmm. You know, you've seen the evolution in players, and uh, it's all about right now. It's all about the conditioning, and uh, you know, you got guys playing 24, 25 years still now. You know, guys oh, like yeah. Joe. And, uh, you know, I think Spezza will play at least another couple of years. He looks great. So he, yeah, it looks pretty good. You know, David Backus uh, just retiring. Uh, he might oh. retire. Um, he had his that. last game in St. Louis. Um, they gave him a great, you know, ovation. He was the former St. Louis Blues captain, captain. there, yeah. David Backus. Um, you know, guys like that are, you know, I watched for a long time. And, you know, seeing them even leave the league is, is crazy to me because, oh yeah, you know, when you start seeing players leave the league, you know you're old. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You know what when I you mean? See him like, come and go? I've watched these guys from the time I was a teenager to to now, where they're leaving the league, and it's just it's crazy, man. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I really like this conversation, but at the same time, we're more questions. than half. Yeah, we're more than questions. halfway down on comments. Let's do questions. 
<laughs> hey, this is this is from like 20 minutes ago. Hey guys, oh. <laughs> just joined. We're comfortable with Campbell in the playoffs. See, I, I, I think we answered this. We're comfortable. We did with that. We're next question. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's Uncle Greg asking these. Good to know. Okay, we're gonna power through these here. Uh, it it looks like a, a Canadian team will win the Stanley Cup, but which one will it be? That's an yeah. The Leafs. If if a Canadian team wins, it's got to be the Leafs. But it's you know. Leafs. Yeah, so my question for you, GMO, is why do you think it's locked that a Canadian team's going to win? That's, I like, that's... I like where your head's at. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm like, okay, we can all look at points and get excited, but the playoffs are a completely different game. I mean, we've, we have we saw Vegas dominate in their first year. We don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea. I know a lot of I, other people I don't, don't I game. don't like Vegas other than their goaltending. Robin yeah. Leonard, you know, Fleury unbelievable but other than that i can't stand patch already i'm not a big fan of the team i just i i think the dog dog poo poo i i mean yeah exactly and i don't know how that team's gone as far as they have but they're not uh, going we, to win. yeah <laughs> you gotta <laughs> I, mean, I hope you're right about campbell this is this is like from half an hour ago i'm sorry about that i'm behind in the comments guys <laughs> i mark my words i'm right about campbell yeah, I mean, I mean, we'll definitely see. I think, I think he's gonna have a good stretch. I think he's gonna have a good stretch. I just want to know about uh, next season. I hope you're right about. Can yeah, Toronto media is harsh. Yeah, we've covered this. They're they're pretty harsh. And we got Toronto's Toronto harsh. Period. Oh, Toronto's harsh in general. Toronto media keeps it all in check. It will always be that way because it's an it's an original six city. Yeah, and because uh, the there fans are lifers. I mean, yeah, for sure. And what is it? Another team that I really want to just I, again. Oh, I hate to start conversations when we're doing this, but this is such a good idea. Do it. Rangers original six team, dude. In five years, that team's gonna be absolutely incredible. Oh, crazy, 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 crazy team. That team is gonna win a cup in the next five years for sure. They have such such great prospects, such great goaltending with Shosturkin and Gorgiev, um, Adam Fox being in the conversation for the Norris, Panarin, hopefully he's all well. Yeah. Um, obviously, Kako. <laughs> Kako's Pratsov. another one. You got Zibanejad. Uh, I love Zibanejad, number 93. You know that. Um, Keandre uh, Miller. Uh, yeah, Keandre Miller. I mean, that team can go on and on and on. Uh, but oh, yeah. you know what? It's not their time. <laughs> it's not yeah. their time. It, it's They're going to do the same thing the Leafs did over the last couple of years. Slow but steady. Slow and steady. And, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I see Mark Messier in the, in the fold there soon. That – oh, okay. Now, okay, now, okay. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I like where you're going with that. You got like Campbell that. at sixteen and two. We're so far behind. Yeah, he's sixteen and two. Our Hamburglar. Hamburglar, dude. The thing about the, okay, the story that I love about Andrew he Hammond, he went undrafted. He's from like an he he was from like an NCAA like Division two school. No one even knew who this guy was. He got a professional tryout with Ottawa, and he came yeah. in his his rookie year, and he went twenty and three. What's happened to him since AHL? But I I just AHL. love. Him. Yeah, you know what it was? He probably ate too many burgers, and uh, that's probably why. The I think the sponsors killed him, man. The sponsors <laughs> killed him. <laughs> the sponsors um, got him in the end. Yeah, hundred percent. I wanted to add, talk to you about the whole Rangers and Tom Wilson thing, and you know, like, Ooh. what's your, what's your take on that? I mean, the Tom Wilson, I, I, I'm a fan of Tom Wilson. I am too. He's a great player. I think he's an all round beast. Uh, North Toronto boy here. He has his mm. cup banner in North Toronto Arena. Um, I don't like what he did with Panarin. Uh, yeah. I thought that was a little excessive, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But I like Tom Wilson, the way he is able to get a team and get under their skin. Fired up. He mm. can get his team fired up. He can get mm. the other team really worried, worried. about playing mm. You know what I mean? And, and that's a type of guy you love on your team. Um, the, the point I wanted to make about this is that the NHL chose not to suspend Tom Wilson. Yeah. They chose not to suspend him. I think they fined him uh, uh, $5,000. $5, mm -hmm. And they, they ended up finding the Rangers. 250 k uh, 
250k after their their uh, you know their speech and you know their opinion on what had happened. I mean, I don't know if the NHL is doing the right thing here. Uh, obviously, they took shot at the most rich team in the league. Obviously, yeah. But I mean, we've seen worse things get suspended for, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's where you got to really put things into perspective. Um, I, I, I think it's a mess, but hopefully they've, they've, they've kind of, you know, resolved their issues and, and moved past it. Uh, yeah, for sure. Just my, my like really, really, really quick take on it is what he did wasn't right. I will say there's, there is a lot of controversy as to pardon. Charles, do me one favor. Mm-hmm. Give me two seconds. Keep going with what you were saying. I'll be right back. Okay, no problem. So, just really quickly, guys, I really want to put it out there. There's a lot of controversy as to what happened with Tom Wilson and Panarin. I want to put it out there that what I think happened, and if you look at the replay, I think that they were both, you know, scrambling, and that's what happens. They're probably about to fight, and it looks to me that Panarin loses his balance. He falls. What I don't agree with is Wilson picks him up again and ragdolls him, which is obviously isn't right. But... And he should have got suspended like one or two games because he's he's a uh, repeat offender. But everyone's making it out to be Tom Wilson's the devil. I don't think Tom Wilson's the devil. I think what happened was he was caught up in the moment, and I don't think people realize that Wilson was caught up in the moment. It was a it was a fired up game, and what I think people aren't talking about enough is yeah, the Panarin thing was bad. That you know, and see what I personally think, Joe, is that Panarin. Uh, you know, everyone says, oh, Tom Wilson ragdolled him. He didn't ragdoll him. Panarin lost his balance. What I don't agree with is he picked him up again and, 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 and threw him down. That was excessive. But I think what Tom Wilson really did wrong was punching Buchnevich in the head when he was when, when, when he was uh, against the post on the ice. That I didn't like. But I think no. he should have got a suspension. But I think people saying, oh, Tom Wilson should be, like, suspended, like, the whole playoffs and blah, blah, blah. That's just ridiculous. I don't think it was that bad. No, it wasn't that bad. And I think it was just Tom, you know, just standing up for what he thought was right. And, uh, you know, I support that, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. I just guts. think Tom, it takes guts to really do that for your teammate. And, you know, that first five seconds of that game, you had five guys fighting, I think. Yeah. That so was... It, it was a nice way to start a game, set the tone, and, you know, within five minutes, Tom Wilson was throwing the gloves. So, you know, it, it's over with, it's done, but I just thought it would be a good piece to bring up in this combo here. Yeah, for sure. And and what is it? It's definitely modern, like, a, like an NHL talk. It's going on right now, and... And, and you know, and, and you know, it's so easy to target someone like Wilson and say he should be out of the league. Oh, no, no. These are the kind of players that make hockey interesting. Not, not the goal scorers. I'm well, no, no, no. Like, no, sorry. Let me let me rephrase that. Not only the goal scorers, but guys like Sean Avery, Tom Wilson, Wayne Simmons. They make ho- Scott Sabrin. They make hockey interesting. And they just do. I'm- I'm almost scared that the NHL is getting too soft. Oh, they are. They they are. And and it's 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 not that's not the game I grew up loving. Uh, exactly. You know, I'm all for vision. I'm all for speed. I'm all for talent. But when you're trying to take away Grittiness. one of the greatest aspects of the game is, and mm. that's to, to have the ability to throw your gloves down and, and knock someone's jaw off. <laughs> you know, it's it's. I don't know what's happening with our our era. Um, I don't know. It's it's crazy, man. It's uh, yeah. hockey should be what it is, and mm-hmm. people should accept it and not talk. You know, not try to take it away from what it is. Because yeah. in hockey, there's fights. In hockey, it's physical. You got men in there with testosterone down up to here. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? You're bound to have a fight here and there, and that's part of the game. So accept it or don't watch it. Yeah. Simple. So that, that's just it. And, you know, like everyone's worried about, um, what is it, about uh, player safety. These players can quit at any time. I mean, they want to do what they want to do. And it's, yeah, I mean, I, I could go on for hours about this. But I just, you know, I just really want to, you know, um, what is it, uh, quickly, quickly put out there. Oh, I forget. I had a really good thought there for a second. But it's gone. I want to tell you who the top ten scorers in the league right now are. Mm-hmm. Okay, so right now we got Matthews at 40 goals. 
Mm-hmm. You got McDavid at 31, Rantanen at 29, Debrinkat at 29, Drysidle at 28, Toffoli at 28, Marshawn at 27, Barkov at 26, Kaprizov Jeez. at 26. Yeah. Write him as the Calder Trophy winner right now. Yeah. I mean, and then the last one is going to blow your mind. Who is Reinhardt? Oh, I was literally okay, 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 okay. I'm so, what? I'm so, what? <laughs> I'm so happy you brought this up, dude. I was talking about this with with, with my friend Gregory earlier. I looked wow. at his stats and I'm like, what? I mean, pardon my friend but I'm like, what the hell? Like, I was looking there. I'm like, Reinhardt. <laughs> Where did that guy come from? No Honest idea. to God, man. Like, no idea. People were trashing him for years, and then all of a sudden, this guy has 25 goals, and it's it's incredible. Yeah, right? I no idea. God bless <laughs> Buffalo, right? Like, yeah. God bless. God Ryan bless. Hart. Oh, I'm so happy you brought that up. I, I, oh. I did it for you, bro. I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my friend Greg were talking about this for like 20 minutes earlier. We're like, how the hell is Ryan Hart like, like in these stats? But it makes sense Unreal. because... Because Hall had like two goals, Eichel doesn't have many goals. Reinhardt was the guy scoring all the goals, I guess. So, yeah, kudos I mean, to him. someone had to, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, kudos to him, man. That that takes skill right there. No Do more. Do we have about... any questions? Oh, we still have so many. For real? <laughs> have... Yeah, For yeah. We, we have no more For Bennington long. talk, but they're all so old. Uh... I hate Bennington. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Campbell's a beast, and Freddie is prepping with Marley, so goaltending should be solid. Agreed. I agreed. Uh, uh, McDavid agreed. is, without question, the best player in the world. I do agree with that right now. Uh, well, actually, McDavid. do I? Mm, I'm going to go with, I don't know. I'm going to go with slightly yes, but at the same time, I'm like. Why don't we do this and give our answer at the end of the show? Yeah, that's that's a very good that's a very good idea there. We'll tell you at the end of the show who we think yeah. the best player in the world is. For sure. Well, r- right now. Oh, I, I, Matthews best goal scorer, but not the best player. I yeah, same here. I think so too. I agree with that. Yeah, and then oh, and then okay, we're gonna do a whole segment at the end, but uh, we still have so <laughs> many comments. Matthews best goal scorer, but not the best player. I I. I can agree with that. I can definitely agree with Matthew's that. Matthew's definitely the best goal scorer in the league in the NHL right now. Oh, yeah, for Don't sure. Don't add me. Don't add I'd, me. Yeah, I'd say so, too. And I want to touch on Patrick Lane a bit later, too, because I'm very disappointed with what Columbus has done with him. But uh, Terrible. Yeah, terrible. They're trying to make him like a defensive superstar. That's stupid. Uh, Matthew's on pace for 67 goals in a normal season. McDavid on, on, on pace for 151 points. I mean, Incredible. Yeah. Incredible I mean, stat, Adam. Um like both those stats in this era incredible you got to give respect you have to give respect to them um it's not about who's better it's about who's making this game amazing yeah and matthews and mcdavid and these stars are really putting the nhl on their back and really growing this game and that's what it's about for me i i want this game to grow not yes. only in the NFL, but across the world. the world. Like this needs to be a game that is played everywhere. And mm-hmm. I think these players, like McDavid, like Matthews, are the type of players that can have the influence across the world to do that. So for sure, uh, I like that stat, buddy. Adam, good job. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely, uh, I definitely agree with that for sure. Especially players from like. Uh, um, very, very, very small uh, communities like, you know, someone like, you know, Crosby and M- McKinnon. I, I don't think McKinnon gets talked about. Cole Harbor, you know, man. I'm an but... East Coast boy. They come from a very small town. I come from Moncton. You know, I lived in Moncton, New yeah. Brunswick for the longest time. Small areas. They breed great players. Exactly. Um, East Coast, we have a heart of gold too, right? So we, we, yeah, know, sure, we know how to win. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I really want to touch on how people don't talk about McKinnon, but that'll be that'll be another one. I'm we could go on for eight hours again. You know this, right? Oh, we, oh yeah. We could go on for like five hours. Uh, <laughs> I'm on, I'm, I'm on Canadian wine. Charles, stop it. Never happens. It happens so, all the time, man. Um, uh, Montreal Canadian. He said, "A Montreal Canadian wine." Charles, stop it. It never happens. <laughs> He's joking. He's joking. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm cool with it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man, for sure. I 
Do Canadians just whine? That's 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 kind of their thing. Brett Hall, Timo Solani, Ovechkin, and Matthews best goal best goal goal scorers of the modern era. Have I missed somebody? No, I don't. I I, I don't think you have. I love that you mentioned Brett Hall because he's my guy. Brett mm. Hall is probably my third. Yeah, my third favorite player of all time, Brett Hall. Oh yeah. Timu Solani too as well, top five for me. So yeah, you've Solani. you've named you've named some very big names for me. Uh Brett Hall, Timu Solani. Yeah. Love oh Hall. yeah. <laughs> you gotta love legend. that. He was a legend, seventy six goals in his rookie year. Um Ovechkin, you can't discredit what he's done in this league. Oh no. Um he's gonna pass uh what is it, eight oh two? Yeah, yeah, he's he's so there. Two is, is, is the amount of goals he needs to pass. I don't know where he's at right now, but uh, I am hoping that uh, Ovechkin really does it. And what a moment that will be! That'll be that'll be incredible. And I Different. definitely think, yeah, like hairs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely think that you know, one thing that I've always thought of when, when I thought of Timu Solani. He kind of pay, and this is this 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 not today. This might not be a popular take, but I think Solani carved the way for players like Ovechkin because you know he came in, he came in from somewhere else. You know, like you know, and there's always this stigma with hockey players throughout up until the '90s where it's like, oh, you're from Russia, like we don't like you. <laughs> but then Solani came in, was great to the fans, we did amazing things for the Jets, scored 76 goals as a rookie. I think that the reason why Ovechkin was so widely accepted and is still now in the hockey community is because of Solani. And Solani had heart and he had a personality and I think legend. I totally agree with you. And it's guys like Solani. It's guys like Bure. It's guys like yes, uh, Fedorov. Sergei Fedorov. Mm -hmm. uh, the Russian Five who, who had a huge influence. Igor Larianov. Yes. Uh, uh, Fatisov, rest in, I think, rest in peace. Uh, McGillney. McGilney as well. All these Russian players had such a huge impact on Ovechkin's career. Um, I oh, mean, yeah. McGilney was unbelievable. Oh, man. On that Buffalo like, team, he was crazy. Just crazy, crazy, crazy. Him and Bure on the same line uh, with Vancouver was just so fun to watch. But, yeah, when it comes to the top natural, you did miss someone, whoever this Facebook user is. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you who it is. It's Mike Bossy. How? Oh, oh no, no. Uh, but, 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 but what was it? He said a modern era. Oh, modern era? Yeah. Oh, I thought you just said natural goal scorers. Oh, no. I definitely agree with Bossy. Well, Bossy, 100%. Bossy's so, a beauty. So criminally underrated. And yeah, see, the sad kills. part is, his prices are never going to go up just because of the sad fact he played for four, four of the Islanders. But I look at his stats and I'm like, dude, even for that era, like that's just impressive. That is just impressive. If, if he was healthy and it, uh, he would have done way more damage and uh, oh, he, he would have made a, a dent a dent in that uh, in that yeah. record for sure i think oh for sure i'm so glad you brought him up i he's he's one of the greats it is Next tough to one. compare yeah it is tough to compare errors gretzky was the best for his time so every 20 years it changes agreed uh, agreed and and that's why it's very hard to uh compare it's very hard to compare a mcdavid to a gretzky or a lemieux to a bossy or you know what i mean it's, it's very hard it's it's mm. it's tough guys and because the the game has changed so much in every decade every decade there's a new rule or there's a new thing that opens Something up the changes. ice like the two line chain or the two line pass that open yeah. up the ice and all of a sudden you know like it's 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 free it's game yeah. You know, you don't have the clutch and grab where, you know, it's not how it is now. You mm -hmm. you hook someone lightly and you get a penalty. It's it's soft. It's baloney. It's, it's soft. It's... And the refs need to get their sh shit together. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, oh, no. Like, oh, no. It's it true. Is, it's it true. Is, it is terrible what they're doing. It's getting It awful. is terrible. You're not, you're not, you're not pulling the game where it needs to go. Yeah. The game is about, is an aggressive game. Oh yeah. There's fighting in it. It's staying. Hitting. It's vision. It's speed. You got two hundred and twenty pound men running into each other. What do you think's gonna happen? Injuries and that's that that should be accepted. <laughs> you know, it's... concussions, yeah, I hate it. It sucks. 
But that's what happens. When you sign up to be a hockey player, that's what you sign up to do. And that's just it. And so, yeah. yeah. I, Cheers. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, I honestly think that you covered everything there. It's. I'm just going to quickly say the NHL is starting to focus on too much of... And, you know, I love to see speedy, speedy, skilled players, but they're trying to silence guys like Ryan Reeves and Curtis Gabriel... Dude, okay, so you might not know who Curtis Gabriel is, but he came in with the Sharks. He got like yep. seventy penalty minutes in like ten games, and, and you know, and like and you know, like er, everyone's like critiquing him. And it's I'm cancel like, Dude. culture. Exactly. Cancel. Like, we need this. <laughs> we need this. This is the game. This is the game. If you want to make another game, go make another game. That's more yeah. finesse hockey. Go play field hockey. Yeah. Boom! I was just... <laughs> That's what you need. With Go all, play field with hockey. With all respect to the field hockey players, it's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. With all the respect, right? But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, hockey is an aggressive game, just like football, just like any other, uh, you know, rugby, lacrosse, any of those games. They're meant for men who are able and willing to take the, you know, the damage that you get from oh, yeah. playing the game. That's what you sign up for, and it's either you grab your cojones or you don't. Yeah, that's just it. Okay, Cheers. yeah. I, I think we've covered all that now. <laughs> Gretzky, Next question. Oh, this is controversial, and this is Uncle Greg, too. Gretzky is the greatest player of all time. There's no debate in my mind. And, you know, everyone can have their opinion. I'm not saying that, you know, he wasn't, but I'm just saying in my personal opinion, I think in the modern NHL, the way that we've seen goalies being trained in their equipment – I say there's not a chance Gretzky's the greatest player. That's just my opinion. But uh, what about you, Joe? It's so hard. <laughs> yeah, but that's just it, it right? It's, I grew up watching Gretzky. I'm a Gilmore fan. That's, that's a would, true hockey player. That's it, a true it, hockey and, player. And I'm making this comparison, and I'm sorry if I break anybody's heart or break Edmonton Oilers' hearts. Gilmore is probably, in my opinion, the best two-way player to ever play the game. In my oh, opinion. Yeah. In my opinion. He fought. He scored 127 points in a, in, a, in a season. Had an unbelievable playoff season. Won the Cup in 89. He is known to... His nickname is Killer. Killer Doug, yeah. That's... So, that, that... And, and if you're looking at... All the players who protected Gretzky, McSorley, oh. <laughs> uh, like everybody protected Everyone. Gretzky. No one protected Gilmore. Oh, no. Except for Clark. Yeah, but, th but those two were scary. And, and, and but the Gilmore Domi. was scary. You know, oh, you don't yeah. want to mess with him. And he was five foot ten, 170 pounds soaking <laughs> wet, just like I am. And yeah. that's why I love the guy. And Legend. in my opinion, he might be... He's the best player, in my opinion, Yeah, of all time, in my opinion, Doug Gilmore. Hmm. Yeah, and yeah, and so, yeah, and dude, I can't agree with you more. And so, I'm going to have... I'm going to make this comment just explode <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, the thing is, is that, so what I stated earlier about my top three hockey players, that's what I'm looking at statistically, and like, not, not like, not so much like, like, emotion emotionally and that's not two way i'm saying the top three best what i think you know overall like hockey players like statistically wise which is i think is true but my favorite player and who i think has the most heart and you know for two-way forwards doug moore's gilmore's at that second position but i gotta give it to bobby clark i'm a flyers guy he Woo! won yeah he won two bobby. cups put up put up a bunch of points played in the summit series he's Yay. Yeah, I and you know I'm not saying that and Clark's better teeth. than, yeah, all those teeth. That I, smile. Yeah, that smile. And dude, he won two cups. People don't remember that he won two cups. So it's like I, I with a team that was just animals. goons, goons, animals, and that's impressive. <laughs> that's, that's impressive because they were they were animals who could score. They were they were goons who could perform, and that's why I love love watching that series, man. It's so I definitely say I mean maybe Gilmore and and, and Clark are tied, but I man I gotta say players like that, those uh, like when I say Gretzky's a hockey player, I don't consider Gretzky a hockey player. 
I consider Gretzky a player who missed the field hockey practice and ended up at the rink. But he could score, and you know that's fine. <laughs> but but you know he would he would constantly be crying. He'd be crying about everything. And at the and end of the day, it's kind of it's kind of the Crosby effect too, right? Yeah, Crosby, that's true. Crosby, you can relate them. Yeah. Mario Lemieux, Matthews, maybe. Yeah, and you see, and, and that's just it. That that's I think it. I think Lemieux and Matthews are more relatable, and in terms yeah. of scoring wise, the big body, uh, the 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 ability to skate and score is mm-hmm. just uh, I would I would compare Matthews to Lemieux rather than Gretzky for sure. Definitely, and, and and you know why I have Lemieux over Gretzky is because. And, you know, Lemieux was never a super physical guy. But, see, the thing is about Lemieux, determination and just the sheer will to play the game. Because not only did he perform, and I think people haven't even looked at all his accomplishments and all of his statistics, he won so many awards over Gretzky. But not even that. I mean, he came back from freaking cancer, and he came back in the modern era and still put up points. And he was like 40. He was unbelievable. Exactly. So, like, that's when I say why I think Lemieux is better than Gretzky. It's not statistically. Well, they were still playing in kind of different eras. It was a bit harder for Lemieux to score. But Gretzky like, also had an all-star team around him. Oh, I, 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 I could go on about that for hours. I mean, you look at... That's a, that's, that's, that's a no-brainer, right? Like, uh, yeah. Gretzky had coffee, low, messy, hurry, hurry Anderson, Anderson Fuhrer. <laughs> mold like i mean the list goes on they're all in the hall of fame so guys really put that into perspective as well yeah. you know he had a supporting cast at that time that was bar none way like, superior yeah. oh than yeah. every other team in the nhl now we have an nhl that is more balanced balanced that's what i like yeah you like more that word competitive balance more competitive more trained more, more, more focus on gameplay, on what they're going to do. They're not smoking bogeys in the dressing room. They're not going out partying, doing whatever they want all night. They're actually focused on winning the Stanley Cup, and that's the difference now compared to, like, yeah. in the 1950s. Like, yeah, yeah they want to win. Winning in, in any sport is the, the ultimate goal, but it's changed. Yeah, it's changed. These guys are, like, bred completely different. I mean, like... If you put Ovechkin in, in Gretzky's era, <laughs> oh my! God. Mm. Like, really? it's not even. Yeah, it's not, dude. Like a hundred goals. He would 100... make the NHL look like a joke. <laughs> he would score like two hundred goals. Like it. <laughs> it would be. It wouldn't be two hundred. It'd be like six hundred. Right? Like eight hundred a year in eighty-two games. Six hundred oh, goals. God. Yeah. I wanted to ask you. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you. What's your thoughts on the awards for this year? Ooh, okay. I got a few of my predictions. I don't know if you want to bring it up, but uh, could we could we bring it up after the comments? Because that that's something I really want to touch on. Do we have more? Oh, we've got so many more. Please. Yeah, Please. we've got like a good like another twenty minutes worth of comments here. A healthy wow. Cam nearly would destroy this league. I mean, Woo! love Cam. Love Cam. He was a beast. Sea bass. He knew how to really kick some ass. Sea bass. Sea bass. Nice. He's yeah. a beauty. So my thing about Neely is it's it's kind of a what if scenario, but I I definitely agree with you that offensive defensemen then weren't as popular, and if we had guys you know like Coffee, well I see a lot of Coffee in in a Cal McCarr, but oh hundred percent. And so you know guys like Coffee oh. Neely, uh, I'm oh I'm I'm definitely forgetting one like Brad Park or something. Um, you know, like those guys, I mean, if they were in the modern NHL, they would, they would do well. I'm not sure. It's hard to compare errors. It, it, it really is. But I think that they would definitely do well, Sanderson. I definitely think that they would do well. And it's a shame what happened to Neely. Uh, Gretzky doesn't even make your top three tough man to impress. I mean, I'm not tough to impress because I'm not impressed by him. I, I can't be impressed by someone that spent his whole career hiding. I, I, I. I just can't, cause when we say hockey player, well, what I think of, you know, when you you know, when someone says hockey player, I think of you know, Gordy Howe. We got like um, Gilmore, Clark, uh, the other Clark. Uh, there's definitely more. Um, oh, I can't think of them right now. 
But yeah, there's definitely more. And so when we say hockey player, I think like he can do everything all around. And you know, while Lemieux wasn't was never a very physical player, he got in fights. I mean, he hit, he dug in corners, and Gretzky just never did that. And so that's what I think. That's the whole part of him that I'm missing. It, you know, if he did that and he got in fights and he was a true, true hockey player, he's no doubtably one of my top three players. But yeah. he just wasn't. Like, I'm sorry, guys. He just wasn't. Like, when we think of hockey players, well, when I think of them, I don't think of Gretzky. I think of him as, you know, he's he's good at two things. He's not good at the other fifteen things. <laughs> yeah. So we got Samson or Bobby or is he in your top five? See, that's tough because it, again, it's just all about era. And what I think of or, I you know, everyone likes to point out that he's a defenseman. I say, okay, yeah, he's a defenseman. Where's the defense? When I watch replays of him, there's he's not all offense. He should have been a forward. That's that's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> he exactly what I'm saying. Been a forward, man. He was in an era where, once again, my point, he was well above the talent level of where he was like in, in oh, the league. Yeah. Oh, he was, yeah. he was well above. That's no doubt. Mm -hmm. But think about all the players that were playing it. They were not even like, you can go through a roster of an NHL roster right now and go up and down it and go, these guys are all NHL ready guys mm -hmm. back then. No. Yeah. Like, it, like if you really look at how, I don't know, man, I, I just, that's why I got into modern cards, man. I just, I didn't watch the 1950s. Mm. <laughs> I didn't watch the 1960s. Like, sorry. Yeah, it was a great piece of our game. Oh, yeah. It made our game where it is, you know, it grew the game. But as I said before, in the last, let's say, from the 80s on, 70s I would include in there as well. From that time on, from the 70s on, made the NHL what it is today. Nice. And, and, That's true. And the reason why I say that is because the evolution of the game from the 70s to the 80s changed. From the nine or from the 80s to the 90s, it changed. And from the 90s, it like, and the stars, like if you think about stars, mm -hmm. you remember guys from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's true. And you know, and you know, I remember a few from the 60s, but it's it's not that many. I can name maybe like 10, whereas today I can name like 100. So, I think that, you know, what uh oh yeah, so uh, Joe's frozen right now, but what I think I Yeah. Yeah, so what what I think so, is sorry? Am I uh am I uh is my uh connection still good? Uh you're okay, yeah. Um it's it's a bit shaky. It's uh, okay. Yeah, yeah my my now. data right now is not working as well right now. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Well, what we can do is, can can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I can still hear you, but I forgot what I was going with with that. Oh yeah, but so but see, like the thing is with with with, with uh, this whole argument, I think first of all that. When you know when when we talk about like sixties and like seventies, I think one one uh, part of the game that doesn't get brought up enough is goaltending. I mean, you look at that era and goalies. I mean, they like worked their they worked their ass off. Um, it was impossible to stop a puck in that era. I'm like just speaking like I think of course I wasn't a player then, but the way that they saved pucks. I don't think it gets. I, I, I don't think it gets enough credit. I think that. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, so Joe's back. Oh he's he's paused again, but it's fine. What well, what we'll got you working soon, Joe? But I think um, I think goalies don't get enough credit. I think that what they had to go through, they don't get an, um, they don't they don't get enough credit, and what they had to do to stop the puck doesn't get enough credit. Uh yeah. The only way to compare greatness is to measure how good a player was versus their peers in that era. That's why Gretzky deserves the title of the best player at all time, untouchable. I have to disagree with you there, Uncle Greg. We can measure how good a player is in that era, but if we were to do that, then we're discrediting all the other eras. So, I think that... And, you know, and like a lot of people that say Gretzky's the best, they grew up watching Gretzky. That's another debate, too, because everyone says, well, oh, well... 
everyone's always going to have a bias towards what they grew up watching. I mean, that's those are our most formative years. So if people were to watch up, were to grow up watching Gretzky, they're probably going to love Gretzky. And, you know, I'm fine with that. But Sorry, compar- Mike, can you hear me? Uh, oh, it's, 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 it's pretty laggy, but I can kind of hear you there, Joe. Um, what I might do is try leaving and rejoining again. Yeah, cause it's, it's actually, oh wait, oh wait, okay, you're, you're good now. We're good now, I think. Oh, never mind, it's paused. Hello? I can hear you. Ah, man. Yeah, so I guess it's just me now. Uh, Joe's having some technical difficulties, but... See, the thing about that argument is... Yeah, I mean, that's true. But now we're in an era where everything's so much more balanced and teams are so much more balanced than they were back then. There wasn't even a salary cap back then. So I I, I can kind of hear what you're saying, but at the same time, you got to look at team, you got to look at era, and in that era, it's true that that's where the people scored the most points, and there were rules then... Like, like half of his assists were off the boards, where it's like, okay, I mean, sure, but we, we got to look at, yeah, the eras and how the eras were different. And the truth is, teams now are more balanced than they were then. There was no salary cap. And so, I think that Gretzky was, was one of the greatest players on one of the greatest teams, and that he got set up with all the right players to succeed. Whereas someone like Ovechkin throughout his career never really had that up until, I don't know, like a couple, a couple years ago. So I think that I hear what you're saying, Uncle Greg, but at the same time, I can't agree with that. It's, I don't think it's true. Uh, Joe, Joe looks to be having uh, a bit, uh, Joe's a bit better now. So, uh, wait, can you just talk for a sec, Joe? Hello? 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 Yeah. Sorry, you... guys. Yeah, can you still hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you, but barely. Like, my, I don't know if it's my connection or your connection, but... My I have connection... no idea. Yeah, I don't know if you want to cut it short and we can continue this another time. Um, well, you're... Uh, it... It's actually good right now. I mean, oh, it's kind of spotty. I don't know. I think we might have to end it here. But Yeah, if you want to pick this up tomorrow or another time, we can actually do that. It's it's up to you totally, man. No problem. Yeah, um it's it's actually really good right now. So I'm just going to hope it continues like this. Oh, never mind. It's just you're you're frozen. Oh, okay, because for me, you're frozen. Can someone comment just really quickly? We're still really behind on comments, but can someone just... Um, can someone just comment, um, who's, who's lagging here? Cause I have no idea. I don't know if it's me or if it's me or Joe. The only way to compare greatness is to measure how good a player was versus their peers in that era. Well, true. I agree with that. Um, this is why Gretzky deserves the title of the best all time. That's, that's the question I'm seeing right now on my screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's the um, question. I mean, I agree with that. Um, his point totals are untouchable. Um, a lot of his records are untouchable, hundred uh, percent. But you got there's something to be said about the change in eras and yes, the development of players um, and the change of the game. Um, you know, and what we're seeing in guys like McDavid and. Uh, Matthews and, and you know all these guys that are coming up McKinnon Marner whatever you can go on and on uh, these guys are really setting the bar a little bit higher now and uh, you know they're getting guys underneath them raising the bar so I think where the game is going now is is healthy and uh, I just I hope they don't get rid of you know the, the physicality of the sport and you know because once that happens it's uh, it's not the best, that's for sure. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And, you know, the whole com- comparing era things is so hard, but I just want to repeat my take on it one more time. Yeah, we can compare how good a player was to their peers, and that's how we measure greatness. 
But at the same time, you look at who else, you know, Bernie Nichols was having 150 point years. So I definitely think that there's, and he actually scored more than Gretzky. So I think there's something to be said about what era they were in. And, comp- and I mean, comparing to peers is fine. But if, again, if, if we were to compare to the peers, Gretzky during, you know, like within his LA days got smoked by so many players. So, right. I, I think that, yeah, there's some, there's some like substance to the argument, but overall, I think we shouldn't be com- comparing players to their peers. We should be comparing them to other, the other greatest players and comparing them to them and not their peers. Because if we compare Ovechkin to his peers, it's a lot tighter because yeah, we have salary caps now and because the game is completely different and it's more consistent. So that's just my quick take on it. We got uh, Doug Gilmore use a straight stick. I had no idea he used a straight stick. Dougie G did use a straight stick, and he knew how to get that backhand up. You know, <laughs> beauty. Amazing backhanders, yeah. Okay, yeah. So Joe, Joe's connection's really good now. Ricky Rick. Yeah. So we got. A, I chose a Canadian team just because the Stanley Cup playoffs is a different animal, and, and you know, and it is. That's just it. It is a different animal. But at the same time, I don't think we should be discrediting all the other amazing teams. In what is I it? Chose the game team because, oh yeah, good call, man. It's it's you got the right uh, the right idea. It's a Canadian team this year, and most likely it's going to be the Leafs. Just so you know. Well, yeah, it, but it's just I, I don't like how people are saying it's definitely Leafs or it's definitely not Leafs, and it's like, well, I, I get it, but at the same time. Like you, like like you said, GMOs, cups are a different animal. We don't we don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, I've seen I've seen great teams, like tremble. So I I think that we can the, all say, pardon. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the playoffs is a different beast. Any team can come in and win. Any mm. team, any team. It's it's about who wants it the most, who has the most heart, who's gonna go out there and put it out on the line, and that's what it is. Exactly. Um, that's playoff hockey, and that's what I'm looking forward to watching this, uh, you know, in the upcoming weeks here. For sure. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you nailed it there. We got uh, Ricardo Villar. A lot of holding interference and hooking back in the day makes you wonder how many soft players could produce in that kind of game. Exactly. I mean, that's that's another thing that we need to think of too, but that's why I like Ovechkin is because he's, like, he's scary. Like, he's he's proper scary. And so I, I definitely do um, agree with you there, Ricardo. Um, and at the same time, you know, and, you know, like one thing, one, one thing that people like to bring up a lot is, 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 what is it? Especially with, with the uh, Tom Wilson argument. Oh, well, you know, back in the day, this never would have happened. And right. I think, well, back in the day, Wayne Mackey was breaking sticks over people's heads. Like that actually happened. So. Yeah. We can. Uh, it, it's just because it's it's not as well known as it is now because people weren't really paying it too much attention to it. Like Dino Cicerelli, like like baseball batted a guy in the head. So that's one thing I want to add to the Wilson argument. It did happen. It it always has happened. The NHL offices uh, is bass. I don't know what that means. Bass backwards. <laughs> bass backwards. Yeah, it definitely is, brother. It definitely is. Oh, just I get like it now. More, okay. Just like the majority of our world we live in right now. But we'll yeah. leave that for another conversation. For sure. For sure. I don't I don't like the pile on, on after a player loses his helmet. That includes his teammates. Yeah, I don't like that either. Uh, that's uh, it's but, terrible. But unfortunately... Uh, oh, sorry. You, know, uh, you don't need to be doing that. I mean, it's... Uh, what is it? I don't like the pile on after a player loses yeah i mean it's like would you do that in football you know yeah. you're just not gonna do that like it's uh you're, you're the ice is hard <laughs> you know yeah. you smash a guy's head off the ice it's uh not looking too good right so you got concussions mm-hmm. to worry about yeah for sure that's definitely that's definitely uh that's that's a pretty good take on it and you know, it's unfortunate that it happens, but again, it's it's just the way the game is and you know, maybe that's something that should that that there should be less of, but there's not much we can really do about it just as fans. Uh yeah, Marner McKenna, I don't know what that was about. 
R- R- Ricardo, but five hours. I better what? go. I better go grab some Timmy's. Loving the show so far, boys. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to end it soon though, just because of the yeah. We, we gotta end soon. There'll be another uh, another edition for sure. Yeah, uh, maybe our episode, if you will. Yeah, um, yeah, you know that could be, you know. Well, we're definitely gonna have an episode this upcoming Thursday when uh, when uh, we have the new series, but. Yeah, man, Definitely. we got we got Thursday coming up, guys. Uh, I hope you guys all tune in. Uh, we're going to chat about, you know, hockey, what's going on, the playoff run, all the stars, what's 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 shaking, right? So it's it's going to be a blast, and I hope you guys all tune in. Um, I mean, yeah, for sure. I, I can't agree with that more. I hope that you guys tune in. I hope that you enjoy it. it it's it's going to be great content. It's going to be just like this, except we're going to be saying, okay, because at that point, players are going to be picking up steam, and we're going to be talking about who's standing out so far and what the what what's just going on around the league. So that's going to be a good one. You got uh, Ricardo Villar. Jaeger. How did I forget about Jaeger? Jaeger. Oh, no. Yeah, he's, he's somewhere in my top four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like... Jaeger, how'd I forget? Oh Jager, no. number sixty-eight. Oh man, legend. Oh. What a beauty. He was he was a legend for sure. I I how'd I forget about him? And he played for so long and he was consistent for There's so, so long. There's so many good players, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's just it. It's hard to so remember many. all of them. So many. And you know what? We'll have lots of time to talk about them in the next episode. That's for sure. Oh, for sure we will. And that's where we're going to be talking about some of the upcoming playoff performers too. Uh, Thursday, I mean, right? Pardon? Thursday, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thursday. And that's actually a day before the playoffs. So we should actually save um, who we think is going to win the awards and like what our predictions are for then. And like, I'm actually going to make like an organized graph for it. It's going to be cool. Uh, Uncle Greg, it's Bobby or don't get fooled by the stats. I mean, GMOS, I will agree with you and say that, yeah, Bobby or was probably on par with Gretzky, but I don't think either of them are the greatest players of all time. I'm sorry. Yeah. Bobby was a beauty, but yeah, Hey, he got injured, right? That, that that's just it. Mario had just as many Hall of Famers and All Stars. Another thing, Mario got injured. You know, you can talk about all who could have been the greatest. Yeah, that's it's, just it's, it. It's not about who, it's about who is. <laughs> and yeah. if you look at point production, yeah, Gretzky's name is going to come up every time. But there's also guys that played the game without enforcers and and without mm. guys protecting them that still did as much damage. And we already talked about those guys, so yeah, exactly. You, you, you. I can't talk right now. You definitely good. Did a good job at explaining that. I can't agree with you more there. We got uh, yeah, and then Mario had just as many Hall of Famers and All Stars like like uh, on his team. Sanderson, I hear what you're saying, but uh, no, he, he didn't. No, he, he didn't. didn't. He didn't. No, he, he didn't. He Mario had, had Yager. Yager Mario had Tom Long Barrasso. Fred. Barrasso and like an aging Paul Coffey. It's, an aging it's, Paul Coffey, an aging Ron Francis, an aging Tom yeah. Barrasso. It's it's he didn't Not have the, the cast. He didn't Not have the, the cast. He, yeah, he didn't have the cast that Gretzky had, and he had he had to deal with Ulf Samuelson on his team too. So Is sorry, that... Sanderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> we got sorry, Lindros. Bro. <laughs> Lindros, Lindros. Oh, how did I forget about Lindros? He's another guy that is all around great player. He's a hockey player. I'm not going to go too far into that, but me, that's me a and uh, me and Ricky. Uh, we met Eric Lindros uh, at one of my son's games, and uh, the Big E was just a beast. Just so big. Not not the most friendly guy, but you know it was cool to meet him. And you know I always loved Big E. Uh, just a dominant player. Yeah, for sure. He he really took control. He really took control of the game, not in not in just scoring, but so many other ways. Uh, Sanderson, Francis, Trottier, Jaeger, Coffee, Mullen, and Brass. One more, Mullen. I mean, Joey Mullen, Mullen at that time wasn't. I mean, his rookie year was like eighty to what was it, eighty or eighty two? Yeah, eighty two. Joe Mullen, eighty two. Joe uh, Mullen, yeah. I mean, that pretty much just wins my argument there. <laughs> so you're talking ten years later. Yeah, it's it's just not a good. Comp- uh, yeah, Sanderson, <laughs> Sanderson, you're you're 
you're like you're a really great guy and you know and you know I can see why why you could make the argument but at the end of the day a lot of these guys were aging and a lot of them were all B players at best yeah I mean Gretzky had a young coffee a young Messier a young Curry a young Barras uh Barrasso, sorry, not Barrasso, Fuhr. And uh, everyone was low. young. They were all prospects at the time, which was incredible. Yeah. Uh, Mar- Mario did not have that. No, Mario didn't have anything close to that. He, I'm he sorry. Had, uh, the fact, I'm sorry, but Joe Mullen, oh man, that's, uh, yeah. Good player, that, but, that, but, but not, not, no, I th- sorry. I, I think that kind this of explains, is- that explains the argument right there. I saw... So, uh, How are we looking right now for time? Uh, it's good. Uh, we're just finishing up on comments. So I'm just gonna finish up on comments, and then uh, I think we're gonna have to end it. We we could have gone for like two and a half hours, but just uh, just a tech issue's got in the way. I think. Yeah. But uh, we got. Uh, I saw Gretzky play in person many times. Watching him play was amazing. He was playing chess, and everyone else was playing checkers. I mean, yeah, yeah, Sanderson. I I. I agree with you there, but also, you know, this is all what if, and like I hate saying what if, but would Gretzky be skating around today's defenseman? I don't think so. I don't think he would be. I don't think. I think Gretzky, Gretzky didn't have hands either. No, I he mean, didn't. You see Gretzky on a one-on-one, nine. Uh, like, he would have yeah. a fifty percent chance of scoring. Yeah, he, I'm yeah. sorry. He, Gretzky didn't have the hands that Mario Lemieux had. Oh, and the Lemieux had amazing hands. I'm sorry. We'll have we'll have this conversation, but I mean, uh, Mario had great hands. He had talent. He had vision. Gretzky was just he knew where to be. Yeah. He knew where the puck was going to be at all times, and that was his advantage. He yeah. had guys on the team that were young and all stars, like. That that whole entire lineup was star studded. So, yeah, different, 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 different. Uh, just totally different. <laughs> yeah, it's just totally. it's it's just completely different. At the end of the day, it's like it's hard to compare. But I get, I I get, I, I get. He was skating around guys, but he also he also wasn't good at skating. So I mean, he he had a good hockey IQ. That's what I will say. He may he may have had and and that, and that took him a long way. So kudos to Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think he probably had one of the best, if not the best, hockey IQs of all time. But everything else, I think, was was lacking. That's Anderson to or I agree with Uncle Greg. He knows what he's talking about. And he does. I definitely agree that you guys all have points with everything. But again, this is just my personal opinion. You know, this is just Joe's personal opinion. I mean, we can think whatever we, um, we, can think whatever we want to think, but... We're not in different, you know, we're in different categories with who we grew up watching. You know, I, I'm i looking at this from someone who wasn't even born when Ovechkin made his debut. So I'm looking at this from my own opinion and from a completely unbiased perspective. That's that's what I'm looking at. Because I never, I didn't grow up with these guys. And so I, I purely watch how they played and I can judge according to that. But I know people, people who grow up watching players, they, they have kind of a, a connection to them. And you know, yeah. and and you know, you know, I definitely, I you know, I definitely um, agree with that. But at the same time, I'm looking at this from purely like my own opinion, and from I didn't grow up watching these guys play, so that's just where I come from. We got a Charles is good. Thank you, man. I I definitely appreciate that for sure. <laughs> for yeah. Sure. And then we said uh, Joe is lagging on you. Okay, thank you for confirming that. Thank you for confirming that. I just I just wanted to make sure because because I got worried there that no one could hear me. So I thought I was talking to a brick wall for a second. Uh, yeah, so- I've been lagging too. That's why I kind of wanted to cut it short. Here. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea to cut it short. We 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 just have two more comments and then I think we should end it. That, that's uh, fine. If you guys want to pick this up another time, no problem. If not, we'll see you Thursday. Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure. We're definitely going to be having some kind of talk about this Thursday. But, uh, you know, I, I really want to focus on the playoffs for Thursday. I think that'll be that'll be a really good conversation. But definitely we're going to touch on this too. Uh, Joe all Mullen, is all-time leading scorer for American hockey players and a Hall of Famer. Let me let me check that. Let me, let me just really quickly check that. Who scored... No, most goals um, 
in hockey as an American. Oh, well, that's that's in a season. Uh, American Idol all-time stats. Let me just check this one second. I'm I'm really sorry, but I I don't think Joe Mullen is the. Yeah, no, it goes. Yeah, it no. goes. Um, My Mike Modano's the all-time leading American goal scorer of all time. Yeah, so it. In in the uh, points category, it goes Brett Hall, Medano, Phil Housley, Roenick, Patrick Kane, Keith Kachuk, then Joe Mullen. So Joe Mullen's a number seven. So he was not the leading scorer. Uh, I'm sorry, he just he just wasn't like anywhere close to being the leading scorer. Uh, Mario stopped at the red line and and wouldn't cross it back in his zone. I mean. I didn't watch game to game, but I can assure you he didn't have much of a supporting cast. And Joe Mullen scored a lot of those points when he was young. So, no, Joe Mullen is is an is an a leading scorer. I'm I'm sorry, he's number seven on the American list. Jesus Christ! Can you when, hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and then Sanderson said when he retired he was. Well, yeah, but when he retired, but I mean, he's now number seven. So I'm just I'm just gonna say that when he retired he maybe was but not now def definitely not now so um, yeah that's all I've got to say about that he was a B player at best um, but yeah guys so I think we're gonna end it here sorry for the technical difficulties there's not much I can really do to really do to fix that yeah I apologize but... for that a little bit of technical difficulties but Thursday yeah. Yeah, so uh, Joe laid out pretty bad there, but I can kind of underst- understand what he's saying. So on Thursday, we're going to come back, and uh, I'm definitely going to make sure that all of this is sorted out and so that this uh, that this won't happen again. But it's a great episode. Thank you, Joe, for coming on. I just really want to uh, really want to throw up. Uh, um, you can follow Card Canucks on Instagram at card underscore Canucks, and uh, join the Facebook group, please. That's I, I, I stream in there, too. It's bearing the same name. You can follow Joe. Uh, oh, I didn't edit that. You, you you can subscribe to Joe's YouTube channel at Puck Daddy ninety three. Uh, he posts great content there, and uh, he keeps it. You know, he, he keeps his opinion raw, and you know, I gotta respect him for that. And you and you can also follow him on on, on Instagram at PD ninety three cards or just Puck Daddy ninety three. Uh, don't forget about the hundred subscriber giveaway. I'm gonna be giving away this KSA nine eight five uh, Austin Matthews Clubs and Contours. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, we're gonna be uh, hopefully we hit that soon. But again, I just I really appreciate you guys watching and. Uh, yeah so uh thank you guys for the uh for the great show and uh i'll definitely see you guys soon so uh yeah peace out everyone appreciate it guys thanks a lot